Hello everyone, by now you've probably been grinding the game a good amount, and if you haven't, that's okay, but eventually you're going to be reaching AFK Progress Stage 100. This is the point where you're going to be unlocking the Arcane Labyrinth, and going in might be a little difficult at first. Now, you can wait a little bit and kind of wait till you get some more levels on your characters, get a little bit stronger and go back in, and the first time will be a complete breeze for you. But if you're like me, and the second you hit it, you want those rewards, you're going in full tilt, trying to complete it. The main reason we want to be doing this is it's a good way to get some epic invite letters, and that's going to be happening on your first time receiving them. Now, when going in on the very first difficulty, you can only go in with five heroes, which makes it a little bit troublesome. And given that we're still collecting heroes, it can also make a little bit more of an impact on picking that best team. So I myself, I tend to go in with two tanks, two marksmen, and then a healer. You see that we got Cessia, Rowan, and then Odie here. And then for the tanks themselves, I believe I'm going in with Lucius and then Brutus. Now Lucius I do like because he is going to create that shield which he can throw on other heroes and Brutus is nice too for having the whole spinning attack. You'll find there are some good boards where there's going to be enemies that just surround you and that's a nice way to make sure you're getting the hits on them. Cessia, we have Mr. Carlisle doing the whole stun and tangle thing, which is a huge help. We can build off of that. And then obviously Rowan with being an OP support, filling up the energy, healing. Odie on the other hand just doing some crazy DPS. Now every Monday this is going to reset these things so it means rewards will be given again so really at least try to make sure you're doing this before Monday. The big ones being getting those first three to get the epic invite letters and getting the dust but definitely try to climb as far as you can go. So difficulty one is going to be 15 stages and prior to going into a stage you're going to be able to pick one of these relic gates. If you beat that stage you're going to get this relic gate added to your equipment. Every time when you get one of these relics to two, four, or six, you're going to unlock a crest where you get to pick which buff you want inside the game. I myself like to use the artifact Awakening spell. This is going to give us that heal continuously throughout the battle. And the reason why I really like this one is because after every battle, you're not going to get your health replenished. Meaning if you got all your heroes knocked down to 50%, next battle you go into, you're starting off with 50%. So this is a nice way to kind of just make sure you're getting healed up constantly. Obviously, you can build some heal stats inside the game, but I myself like to grab this one. And then for the other things, I like to go and build ones that give the attack speed, give additional attack damage, and then even doing some crit. We can only have up to four of these relic gates, so plan accordingly of what you want to do for which stats you want to get. And the other thing I like to do is grab some of those resurrection potions. If I can at least get two of them, that's a big help. You'll find early on, or at least when you get later and you're under leveled, you'll stay alive, but you're not doing enough damage. So you end up timing out with all your heroes alive. And then next thing you know, you have it where you don't have any heroes left. So this is a nice way when you do make it to the final boss, which is usually where this happens, you at least have a couple of these to get one of your DPS going again and a tank going again. And sometimes that's enough to drop them. By all means, you can grab more of these. It does help out. Once you get to the difficulty too, you can then select 10 heroes to go in with it. So it's not too bad, but at least the first time going in, it can be kind of hard to go and make it past that first boss. I'm not usually big on getting the ones that will give additional crystals. I always like to get the stats themselves. I mean, unless something looks like it's really not going to be beneficial or actually you have all of your relic gates filled up with different ones, then it'd be a good idea to go for. But like I said, main thing I want to do, attack speed, attack power. I will, on the other hand, get the fit store every time I see it. That way I can hope that there's a relic gate inside there where you usually get a choice to pick between one of the three of them. That's a nice, easy way to build up your stats inside the game. Also, try to read these stats and kind of compare it to what you have already. You can click up on your relics that you have, see which crest you've selected, what your stats are, and see if it is going to be really beneficial. So if you see one like Furious Attack, which is going to give your first five normal attacks do critical strikes, well, if you already have a crest that's going to do additional crit damage or benefit something from doing a crit, it might be a good one to pick. You get a skill like that and then even like power drum here, which is going to give 100 extra energy every time you critically strike. That's another way to keep those alts going. I really like to grab the ones that give extra buffs when heroes are under crowd control because of Cessia and having Mr. Carlisle do his whole stun and tangle. 
The first time you play this, it may seem like it's taken a long time because there's a lot of thinking about it and trying to figure out which one should I go for. Kind of try to just feel it out, but I promise you, after you play this a couple of times, it does go incredibly quick. And like I said, the rewards are good. So don't let yourself think like, oh man, I don't got time to do that. Just play it, have fun with it, and really try to boost up your attack. We will make more guides on this as we get further in the game, maybe best heroes, best relics, tips for completing it, even the final labyrinth that once you get into the late game of it there, there's a lot of stuff to go around this. But if you guys want to know the best way to spend the gems inside the game, this is what I was doing through the beta when we were playing it before the game actually went global, and it worked pretty nice for me. Take a look at this video right here. Thanks for watching, and remember, I pick my butt.